Welcome to our latest video. I'm going to be teaching you how to paint black armor on a Stormcast miniature. Welcome to the latest Artisopia tutorial. We are going to be painting this guy. So if you'll come out on the camera, it's a black armor tutorial. It's not just for Stormcast if you're doing black space marines, primaris, eldar, it doesn't matter. It's a really good way to do about it. We've gone for a kind of a middle gray. I'm super pleased with this technique. It's uh, very, very efficient. And we even got in a little bit of NMM here and here, which is done in an extremely natural fashion. So I'll be covering the detailing of the NMM and how to do the base in two future videos that'll be coming out in the next probably three or four days. We'll link those when they're ready. If you like the video, please like it. Uh, please subscribe, hit that bell notification so you see when the following videos come out. And also stay tuned for the end of the video because we're going to be announcing a little bit of a giveaway. Enjoy. Welcome to an extremely simple tutorial. This is what we're going to be using here. We're just going through the basics. This is going to be a black armor. We're doing it on a Stormcast model. They've got lovely shapes. This could just as easily be a Space Marine, Primaris, uh, Eldar, doesn't matter what race you're talking about. It'd be absolutely fine. We've undercoated this. This has been airbrushed black because it was uh, previously a colored model, but you can go from a spray can um, or just paint it by normal with stippling or whatever you like. Uh, any type of base coat is fine for this. An important detail is that we're going to be hitting this with a matte varnish at the end. That's optional, but I think it's a really good idea. Um, if you don't have a matte varnish or you don't want to varnish it at the end, then just try and pick a black that is as glossy or not glossy as the grays you're going to be using on top of it so you don't have two different textures of paint. So often black has a very different color. So we've got here Eshing Grey. We're going to be mixing it a little bit with our black. You can use any black you like, just whichever is your preferred one. Um, by is it, it, there's a lot of personal preference for people. Valeo 950 is particularly popular, so um, that is a great option. Now the first stage, I am simply stippling any of the higher areas of the model with a very dark mix of our original black and Eshin Grey. Um, this isn't particularly delicate, but I just want to have something going on apart from normal dry brushing edge highlighting. So you can take pictures of the model beforehand to do this. I've got one of those on my phone in front of me that I can show you in the next step. Um, just make sure you, you hit it from whichever angle you decide. If you want to, you can do an all over dry brush. You're just trying to make sure that the next stages you put down aren't going down on 100% black all over armor with sharp edges. Uh, this is for this technique. If you want to do it like that and you want super, super sharp edge highlights, then by all means do it in whichever way works best for your uh, for your chosen uh, number of steps or subtlety or sharpness or whatever else it is you're going for. So we're just making sure that we've covered pretty much all over the model, not neglecting the bow either because that's going to get some attention soon. I have pulled the quiver off this guy. I don't like additional details on models when they're not needed, especially when I'm using a physical technique like dry brushing. Don't forget between the shoulder blades, that's particularly easily done on these models because normally it's not a Point to highlight but that armor is amazing so we want to make sure we don't miss it that's our first step you'll have barely noticed anything there but we'll uh, be increasing it a little bit in the following ones okay so for our next step i thought i'd show you this i've taken a picture under my light and that's just sat to my side to give me an indication if i feel a little bit lost with highlights it's a really good method you can go into photoshop and exaggerate that far more more if you wish it's a it's quite a good way to go about things just for kind of mapping them out so we're involving gray here here And we've got to be super careful. We're already into a realm where we could very easily uh, pick out things we don't want to, so we are going much softer. This is quite a rough, and, a, rough, a rough and ready technique, so you don't need to be too precious, but we are edge highlighting. It's not easy to do that without applying some type of uh, concentration or delicacy to what you're doing. So it's worth taking the extra time just to test things on the edge of your palette. I'm trying to hit my model from above more than I'm trying to hit it from other angles, but if it's absolutely necessary to catch edges, then of course I'll go at it this way. So the idea with this is you only want it leaving on the edges of the model. You're not looking to particularly flavor the mid sections or the panels or anything like that. We've hit them with a tiny bit of gray anyway. That's more than a lot of people would use. So 
taking care and making sure we test our brush before we take it to the model, unlike I've just done there. Probably showing up here because I haven't mixed in enough of our previous and darker grey. If you were looking to do a stone effect or something like that, you could absolutely add more gray at this stage or do it less selectively, but we're going for just hitting the edges. When you're happy with how much is on your brush, you can proceed with a lot less caution. Uh, just try and start an area that you want to be hit the most or test it on your texture palette or back of your hand or your thumbnail or something like that. So I'm going to go all the way over this section like this and pick out every single edge. Little tidbit here, I want the bow to be a little bit brighter so that's going to become the point at which I test and uh, begin each of these passes, these careful passes. So as we want it to be a little bit brighter, we're not as worried about it and we're just trying to reflect the lighting that we'd see if it was lit from above which we've got on our phone next to us. So I'm going to hit these top second sections much more heavily kind of alternating the areas that are light and dark and then we'll paint the bow black around it or something else around it and that'll subtle up uh, all of this ham-fisted overspill that we've got. So hitting them from the top. Or the bottom alternating. Back to the dampening pad, back to the palette. And that might not look particularly fantastic now, I'll do the arrow as well, but we'll be able to do some special stuff with that a little bit later. If you're looking to only hit one plane, you can always dry brush specifically in one direction if you're quite careful. So we've started there on the model. Now we can go to carefully picking out all the edges of elsewhere. It's just a way to make sure that if you make mistakes, you make them somewhere it matters less than elsewhere. We will also hit the chain mail like this. And these two can be our super shiny areas. Okay, so our next step, we are starting to get dangerous here in terms of how light the colours are we're using. We're just going to take a little bit of grey, so a tiny bit there. Generally I work for my palette, but especially with Games Workshop pots, you can dip carefully in the edge here, which is the equivalent of how we take on our palette. So it's not the other end of the world to do like that, but if you're working from a dropper bottle, then you're much better working in lines. And dipping straight in there is just too dangerous. <laughs> it's running a gauntlet. Okay, so we've got a very small amount on a brush. We're not dampening it too much. We're just looking to hit edges. And these ones here, we're concentrating our angles more. We're not going from top. We're going from whichever edge it is we want to hit. And uh, we might spend more time on edges that are the ones we think the sun would be catching, but we're just trying to hit everything from roughly the right angle. If you go too much or you buff too much with these, you will end up highlighting the midsections. So I try and avoid those. So you can see I'm going from one direction here. This is quite close to how you try and paint this with an uh, NMM technique. If you are dry brushing and uh, it's, it's all the same ideas, we're gonna be using those ideas on the, uh, the crossbows detailing quite a bit more also. So working away the majority of that paint. Testing it first. And hitting it on the edges that we've decided are our NMM sections in a stipply sense and then edge highlighting too. You can see here how non-metallic metal silver is completely possible with, with dry brushing. Even with a large brush, this would be better if I was using a small, um, but we're trying to get kind of a, uh, an army ready quick effect here. So I don't want to do anything that's too, too timely. If that is something you'd like to see in future videos, by all means, let us know. And it's something we could look into. These Stormcast models are really, really good for it. So we're hitting, Areas like this, hit the bit that sticks out, hit the bit that's facing the top. 
we're trying to catch most edges but we want to get it more or only on the bits that are going to be catching the sun the most and be really careful when you're going to your dampening pad test it on your your thumb first get an idea of just how much moisture we're dealing with there this is one of the reasons i don't paint with gloves it um, desensitizes you to this type of thing all right too much softly softly begin in these sections a glaze or two more on these and they could really look quite special making sure to bring attention to the head and really get in the nooks and crannies here it's a very three-dimensional model I feel like I'm taking a long time to just do this but you have to bear in mind this is the equivalent of your edge highlighting and we've gone all over a model in four steps in I don't know about five minutes or something like that whilst paying attention to the bow you pay a lot of attention to that central section too all right we'll complete this and we'll move on to the next bit all right so things are getting really dangerous here grace is light enough but about to evolve ceramic white in the process so dampening pad first we're not going to use it as much drawing because we're doing super delicate dry brushing here we're not doing any buffing or anything we're just wanting to hit those edges a little bit of grace here that is an unhappy white that one's been on the shelf for a while any white of your choice is fine test it on our nails get a feel for it and then we are just wiping this on the very edges we've worried about you can go with a little less care on the bits of our bow which is actually going to look pretty good considering the time that we've spent on it when your dry brushing goes make sure that you've got a sturdy grip on your model if you haven't you will get a dramatically worse result my guy's foot isn't attached to the base one of the feet at least and it's um it means that i've got to brace him quite well lower down the model otherwise you're just not going to get the same effect. Any wobbles here will soften edges that you're looking to hit specifically with edge highlights, that type of thing. So it's important to have a really firm grip on it. I'm trying to avoid catching middle sections at this point, just the edges. And then there's a few areas such as his armored loincloth where I can get. And also these sections that I'm painting in a different color, I really don't mind if they get hit. It's just going to make my um, the process of painting them a bit easier. So this is the last step. I recommend you use a, uh, a happier white than mine. Okay. So as I said, you're, you're wiping. It doesn't even feel the same as dry brushing. Going against the grain here, just to make it sure that we're hit by the edges. And, trying to concentrate on the upwards facing edges. Hopefully this is showing up on camera. Whoops. Hopefully this is showing up on camera. A lot of people don't realize how specific you can be with your edge highlights, but it's an extremely efficient way to do it. It's not quite as striking as if you took the hours as doing it uh, in the traditional layering heavy metal sense, but you can really, really get some fantastic results just by paying due care and essentially having the right amount of paint on your brush and the right brush, which is where ours come in. Super useful. Okay, I'm just gonna go around and do some finishing touches carefully through this. I'll put it onto a time lapse and the black arm will be done. Okay, so here we are, we're done. You could wash this down with a, with a dark black wash. Well, not even a dark black wash, just any black wash or even a deep blue or something like that. If you wanted to knock it back, the back shows what we're going for. It's very close to an MM. Basically, you would just start a lighter gray or use a heavier coat of the middle grays and you get to where we are with a bow, but it's fantastic effect. So we're just gonna scoot through detailing the additional bits. I'm gonna pop a little bit of a glaze 
in this NMM section just to exaggerate things. I'll show you how I do that on camera and I'll put up on a time lapse for the, uh, the trim and stuff like that because that's not particularly what we're going for. I'm going to be choosing lighter colors than I would do normally uh, for things like the, the belt or the trim or whatever and that's because I want to make the black look blacker by having light stuff around it. I'll also choose to base the model in like a, a white limestone effect and that's going to pop up the contrast because he's going to look darker in comparison so our black will look blacker because it's next to brighter things. So let's grab myself a kind of a just a any of our more medium medium small brushes. I'm going to use a number one here from Series S. Series M would be fine too and to some degree you could use Series D but just looking to speed it up here so to make a heavily diluted black glaze and then just push it into the recessed areas that we have here. This is a great way to fix anything that didn't come out quite as dark as we were hoping for or that we hit when we didn't mean to. You can dot around details like the rivets, all these little studs, whatever they are, and exaggerate the recesses too. So super quick work. You're only trying to add more paint in the darkest bits. But if it's properly dilute, you're not at any risk. You could put in some interesting colors in this, a little bit of nuance, but I'm just going for the basics. And you can do it as many times as you like. So I've done one layer here. I can make the next one slightly darker. And then just hit the areas I've hit again, and exaggerate them a bit more. If you make it uh, not dilute enough, you'll end up obscuring your edge highlights and you don't want to do that. We've got a really good job of getting edge highlights with dry brushing here. So concentrating on the recesses. And all of this will be exaggerated when we paint the wood around it because it won't blend in nearly as much as it does now to its surrounding area. Cool, so there you see, super quick not particularly delicate or like finesse glazing or anything like that and we've got a really good effect on the non-metallic metal. Right, time lapse time. Top tip, so we've dragged a little bit of the basing up the legs of this model. I've just wetted them with a plain water brush like this, then grabbed some of what I've got here before it's dry and then um, just pulled it in the recesses. You only really want it in the recesses, but especially with black armor, it would be unre unrealistic if he didn't have some of his environment on his, <laughs> on his shoes at least. So that's just a nice way to kind of tie things in and stop him from looking like he's uh, landed from the skies, which I guess technically he could have because he's stormcast. Okay, so here we are with the finished piece. It's on a base. Uh, we will link up how to achieve that result. It's kind of a, a limestone-y one, um, like a sea cliffs or something like that. The gray black has turned out really nicely. Uh, you could have less of the gray, less of the white even. You can glaze it down more. You could use a higher proportion of white on the raised areas like that. And like I said, this technique is very close to non-metallic metal like the bow is. So that's the result. I think it's super solid. You'd have the option to paint armor trims or whatever in different colors, but uh, that's what we were going for. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see any other Stormcast chapters, let us know down below and we'll pop them on the list. Uh, they're a very, very nice model to dry brush. They're quite open and particularly the ones that aren't the most recent ones. They don't have a wide variety of cloth and stuff like that. So you can do their armor pretty much in one shot uninterrupted. All right, so I think that went really well. I'm super pleased with this. This is a scheme I've had in my mind for a long time for an army for myself, actually. Super efficient, can get it looking really good. We're gonna cover how to detail the trim with NMM and how to paint that base in future videos. So please hit the bell notification so you can see when those come up. Also, I mentioned we're gonna be doing a giveaway. So the texture palette that I've used in this video here, which is a super useful kind of a painting resource, learning tool, cleaning, washboard, 
it does everything. You're gonna be giving that away as well as a set of brushes of your choice. So comment below what you'd like to see us painting next. That can be a color, a model, um, a concept, like a, I don't know, like a, like OSL or someone standing next to a fire, or it could be yellow, green, Alpha Legion, whatever. Uh, let us know below and we will do our best to kind of put those in our big list of stuff we're working out. If anything gets more likes than others, so please like the suggestions of other people below, then we'll just do that sooner. So um, yeah, engage with us below. Give it a like if you like other people's suggestions or think it's something that you'd really like to see and maybe that'll get up liked and become our future video. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you soon for the detailing and also for how to paint the base of the model. Thank you.